Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here and welcome to another episode of Aaron's Art Tips. Okay, so today I want to take you through a little animation trick. This is something I learned years ago when I was working with an animator by the name of Mark Kausler. We were working on a Roger Rabbit short called Roller Coaster Rabbit, and there is a scene where Roger had his head sticking up out of a, a little baby carriage, and he had to move his head really quickly from side to side, and there was a lot of distance that we had to cover and only a few frames to do it. Well, Mark taught me this thing, this technique called a wipe. And what it is, is you stretch the features of a character across the screen to kind of cover that, that gap that, you, that you're creating because you're moving so far. Now this isn't, you shouldn't confuse this with a stretch, like in, uh, you know, you've heard of stretch and squash, one of the principles for animation. Well, usually when we have something stretch, when it needs to get some, uh, when it's like say a jump, we're trying to get somewhere really quickly, we'll stretch the character, but we tend to keep that volume. Okay, we just stretch the volume. What we do with a wipe is actually we're, we don't care about volume. We're covering silhouette. We're trying to stretch a silhouette across the screen. Okay, I think of it this way. When, when you're watching a live action film, when you're shooting in live action, the shutters the, on the camera in live action, let's say it's open for between a 24th and a 30th of a second. Well, when something moves really quickly across the screen, like my hand, well, if you were looking at those individual frames, you would see that my hand would blur across the screen. Well, in essence, that's what we're doing with a wipe, except we're, it's, the, it's the hand-drawn version of that. So let me show you uh, uh, what I've done really quick. Uh, first of all, this is TV Paint. Uh, this is a digital program that I like to use. It's really, really great because um, I can sit down and I can do my hand-drawn animation just like on paper, but I'm doing it paperless. I'm doing it digitally. Um, and it's got the same look, the same feel. I can move drawings around. I can change timing. It's wonderful. But anyway, I've roughed out a very quick um, shot here of this boy, and he's getting yanked or he's turning. Um, anyway, he's moving across the screen really fast. He's going from point A to point B. I'm going to go ahead and play it. So you can see him. Whoa, he turns really fast right there. And, um, but what I've done is in between the, that, the first pose and the last pose, I've added a wipe across the screen and some stretch drawings. Okay, so the, the, there's, there's the actual stretch where he starts to move, but then I've got this wipe. And I'm going to stop this really quick so you can see. All right, so you've, you've seen how he moves. You know, I can move across the, the I can scrub it up and down the, uh, the time frames right here. But watch, I'm going to move across slowly. Watch how distorted I was. I actually made these drawings. Watch when he starts to move. Look at that. See, there's my wipe right there. Because I had so much distance that I had to cover, I really stretched that silhouette and wiped it across the screen so we could catch up over here and slow into that pose. Here's a, there's still a little bit of distortion there. But he snaps right in, and wipes are always done on ones. I always do them on ones. Ones meaning one drawing per frame, okay? Or one frame per drawing, however you want to phrase it. Okay, so look at that. Look how stretched he gets, how really warped he gets. But that's, like I said, this is our version of a blur in live action. If, the, if, you were, if you were to move this quickly on a live action uh, camera and it was a real person, you'd get this much blur going across and he'd be distorted, but it would just all be blurry. Here, we're doing the same thing. We're just covering distance. Look at this. Let me turn on my light table and you can see right here, see the green drawing and the purple drawing. That's the distance he had to cover uh, in one frame. And so I created this drawing in between. Also, look at how I'm following the arcs. Look at the top of the head. See how the head follows that arc. 
See how the chin follows an arc. The neck follows an arc. The nose, see how the nose follows the arc. As long as you follow your arcs when you're moving through a wipe, um, you can pretty much get away with anything as long as that silhouette matches up. Um, I could have put I could have put a cat face on there, and as long as I followed all the arcs, it probably would have worked. Um, but anyway, uh, that's a wipe, and go out and give it a shot. Um, they're a lot of fun. They add a lot of fluidity to fast animation, um, and it doesn't have to be just broad animation that you do this in. If you're trying to do realistic animation, but you have something move across the screen fast, you can still get away with using wipes. Like I said, it adds fluidity and it, it makes it a more of a pleasure to watch. Okay. So that's wipe. Those are wipes. Um, go out and give it a shot. Go out and try some fast animation um, and see what you can get away with. They're a lot of fun. So until next week, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.